Nirvana, In Bloom, Dave Grohl. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to this drum lesson covering the drum part of the Nirvana song In Bloom. This is the fifth music focus, and I thought it was about time that I would focus on a drum part played by the legendary Dave Grohl. Nowadays, we know Dave Grohl as the frontman of the Foo Fighters, but before that, he was the drummer of Nirvana and also played on their second album, Nevermind, which is an absolute classic. In Bloom is the second track of that album and has a very interesting drum part. So, let's dive straight into it. Now, the way I recommend you to learn a new song on the drums is to get familiar with the different drum parts being played in that song. Now, you can compare the different drum parts with ingredients that make up a dish. Once you're familiar with the different ingredients, then the next step is to know the order in which to play them. So, this song has four different drum parts, or four different ingredients. We have a drum part that is played in the intro and in the instrumental parts after the choruses. We have a drum part that's played in the verses. We have a drum part that's played in the first part of the choruses. And we have a drum part that's played in the second part of the choruses. And I will go with you over all the drum parts, over all the ingredients. The first ingredient we're going to discuss is the intro part. And it's very characteristic for the song. And it sounds like this. Okay, this is the first ingredient. It's played in the intros and in the instrumental parts after the choruses. Let's break it up. The beginning is almost like a rhythm, sounding like this. Of course he's not playing this, but what he's doing with his bass drum and his snare drum is what he's actually playing. So he's playing one E and two E and. Now he's barely playing on his hi-hat, but he's playing on the crash on one and end of two. And it sounds like this. Again. And when he goes to the snare drum on the second count, he plays it together with the hi-hat. And you can try to play the hi-hat a bit loose. So it sounds like this. The second part of what he's playing goes like this. So he plays two flams on the snare drum, he plays one flam on the high tom, and he plays one flam on the floor tom. Again it sounds like this. And between these flams on the toms and the snare drum, he plays a bass drum. So you get two flams on the snare drum, bass drum. Another flam on the high tom, bass drum, flam on the floor tom, bass drum. One more time. Now I don't want to make it too technical, but he's playing it one sixteenth note after the third count, so on three E. Three so it perfectly ends the bar. Three. And a, four, three and a. But don't worry too much about counting and placement. If you follow the melody of that groove, if you follow the melody of what you hear, you will play it also. Because if I sing it, boom, tsbuka, boo, tra, tra, do, tru, do, tru, do, I just follow what I'm singing. So he's playing that four times. The second ingredient is the drum part that Dave Grohl plays during the verses. He plays 16th notes with his right hand on the hi-hat. And you also want to pay attention to the dynamic development across the verse. It sounds like this. If we strip it down a bit, he's playing 16th notes on the hi-hat 
and let's not worry about the kick drum right away and just play a snare drum on two and four. It sounds like this. Now what he's doing with the bass drum, he's playing two sixteenth notes on the one and the E and the three and the E. And it goes like this. Now one element you want to work on are the dynamics. In the beginning, before the verse starts, before Kurt Cobain starts singing the verse, it's a bit more rough, also because of the guitars. So you want to play it with a slightly loose hi-hat, sounds like this. Now when the verse starts, you only have bass, guitar and drums, so the guitar, the electric guitar is taken out and therefore you can close the hi-hat to play with the dynamics again. You can go back a bit. Sounds like this then. Now the second part of the verse, the dynamics increase and the guitar also enters. He plays a little fill, let's not worry about the fill right now. You just want to start slightly opening up the hi-hat again. Play the hi-hat a bit more rough, like I just did with the intro. The third ingredient, but also the fourth, are played in the choruses. You can split the choruses in two parts. In the first part, he's playing a groove with a lot of 16th note bass drums. It sounds like this. So you notice I play a crash on every one, every bar. Let's forget about the crash for now and look what he's doing with the bass drum. Because that is the most tricky part of this rhythm. He's playing a lot of sixteenth notes. Slowly it goes like this. So bass drum on the one. Bass drum on the last sixteenth note of the first count, right before the two. Right after your snare drum on two, a sixteenth note with the bass drum on the second sixteenth note of the second count. And then also a bass drum on the last sixteenth note of the second count. And you loop that for the second part of the bar. So the whole bar sounds like this. And again you play crashes on the ones, so you get... The fourth ingredient is played in the second part of the choruses. It's tricky because it contains a sextuplet fill and it sounds like this. Let's break it up in two parts. The first part is more of a rhythm. It goes like this. If I take out the crashes, it sounds like this. So you got two bass drums on the one and the end and the last sixteenth note of the count. One and the. And then a snare drum on two of course, that's your rhythm, your backbeat. And then you have another snare drum on the end of two, so one and the. And then you have a bass drum actually played with a crash one sixteenth note before the third count, the last sixteenth note of the second count. 
So uh, it sounds like this. Again. Try to see it also as a melody. Don't worry too much about counting. I mentioned these placements because of the lesson, but when I play it, I follow a melody. Ba 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 da ba da. That's also what the guitar is playing rhythmically. So it's just supporting with the drums the rhythm that's played in the guitar. So the chorus is a rough part, your guitars are strong and you want to support that sound also in the drums. So you want to play the hi-hat slightly open or loose. So rough it sounds like this. Now let's focus on the second part of this ingredient. This is a tricky part. You're playing a sextuplet fill on the fourth count and in the third count you play a kick drum and a snare drum with the hi-hat. Those two counts sound like this. One, two, So you're not playing anything on the third count. After the third count you play a kick drum and your snare drum and hi-hat together. And then right before the fourth count you already set up the sextuplet fill with one stroke with your left hand. But let's take that one out for now. So if I take it out it sounds like this. One, two, three. The second time he's playing it, he's always playing all the sextuplets only on the snare drum. I can do that also right now. And again, you want to follow the melody. So you get one, two, three. So one, two, three. Du ka, 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 ka. Again, sing it. It's so helpful. One, two, three. Du ka, 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 ka. Now playing and singing it. One, two, three. The first time that he plays it, he phrases the fill, the sextuplet fill, over the drums. And he has the same setup as I have here. One high tom, one floor tom. So I play the first three strokes of the sextuplet on the snare drum. Right, left, right. Go with my left hand to the high tom. And then with my right and left hand to the floor tom. So we get So the second part of the groove is one, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Now, as I mentioned before, he's playing a pickup with the sextuplet fill. He's playing a left hand right before the fourth count, already part of the fill. And that really makes it smooth. If he would leave that open, it would have sounded like I just played it. But with that pickup on your left hand, it sounds like this. One, two, three. Again, try to follow the melody. One, two, three. Buka, ka, 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 goo, goo. One, two, three. Buka, ka, 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 goo, goo, goo. When I play it, it sounds like this a bit faster. One, two, The second time he does the same thing, but then all strokes stay on the snare drum. So the whole second part of the chorus sounds like this. One, two, three, and four, and... So those are the four ingredients that make up this song. Of course it's up to you to find the right places. You start with an intro, first ingredient, then we have a second part of the intro into the verse, then 
Then we have the first part of the choruses. And then we have the second part of the choruses. All right, those are all the ingredients of the song in bloom. As always, in the description of this video, you will find the download link to where you can download the sheet music with the transcriptions of all the grooves and fills I've discussed in this lesson. If you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for the next music focus.